Hello and welcome. My name is Hapsi Ibrahim Mahmoud and I'm going to be your instructor today. Brought to you by the Tweet Academy Limited. This is an educational cooking class and today's class we're going to teach you how to make churros. C-H-U-R-R-O-S. Churros. Stay tuned to know more about it. So what are churros? You might say, churros are a delicacy made in Mexico. They're a snack, they're a dessert, they're taken for breakfast, they're taken any time of the day. Just the way that we eat kose, <laughs> that's how they enjoy their churros. It was brought by the Spanish conquistadors during the time that they were colonizing the Americas. And it's very famous in Mexico. Other parts of South America have their different types of churros, but the Mexican one takes the cake. I'm going to show you how to make it. It's pretty easy. The first thing we need is water because we're going to make a pate choux. So what is a pate choux? A pate choux is a type of dough that is made while cooking it. So I'm going to show you how to do that using water. We're going to use one and a half cups of water, a quarter cup of sugar, Margarine. Now, this is the tricky part. There's a difference between butter and margarine. I'll explain that later on, but we're going to use six cup spoons of margarine. We're going to use one and a half cups of flour, three eggs, some vanilla extract, look for the good one, and some oil to fry your churros. I have a piping bag that I'm going to use to prep out our churros and a pinch of salt that we're going to use to balance out the taste. Are you ready for the class? Get your notes ready. We're going to start class. So when you light up your pot, the next thing you're going to do is to measure out. All bakers need measuring cups. Some people use scales, but I find that measuring cups are easier for people that are beginners. This is your one cup, which is 250 grams. This is half of 250 grams, which is 125 grams. That is a half cup. And guess what? Two of this makes one of these. And then we go all the way to the quarter and three quarters. And the same goes with your measuring spoons. These is your one tablespoon, one teaspoon, half teaspoon, and quarter teaspoon. So now into the pot, we're going to add one cup of water. I'm using a glass pot here so that you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to initially add a half cup, but what I'm going to do is I'll put half of it and then I'll keep the other half to later because I don't want to pour all the water now. Into this, I'm going to add my margarine. So margarine is made with plant fat, that is maize, canola, um, soy, all those fats, those oils, when you emulsify them, they turn into margarine. Emulsification is a form of beating it so that it hardens. But this is butter. Butter is made of dairy. Dairy is made from milk. This is made from animal. This is made from plants. So this cannot be called butter. It's called margarine. And this is butter. Butter is always churned and put in the fridge. It comes in, most of them come in these sealed packs. Some come in sticks, some come in half sticks. So this is a whole stick. And it's always tin foiled and it always has to be refrigerated. I'm explaining this to you so that you remember that don't call margarine butter. They have different tastes and they have different purposes. And although some recipes call for margarine and some recipes call for butter, they are not the same thing. They are completely and totally different. I hope you got that tip. Now moving along. I'm going to scoop out six heap tablespoons of margarine. And I'm going to plop it into the water. So remember I told you we're making a shoe pastry. Shoe is a very European kind of pastry. The French call it pâte choux. But the Spanish, I'm sure, just keep it simple. And that's why this is a very simple dish. I put three in now. 
I wish I'd use a teaspoon. <laughs> use a teaspoon when you're scooping it out. One more. And finish. Give that a nice stir so that everything goes in. I'm going to put my quarter cup of sugar. The reason why I'm only going to put a little bit of sugar is because we're going to roll it in cinnamon sugar when we finish frying the churros. So if you put too much sugar in, when you put it out, it will be too sweet. And you really don't want it to be too sweet. I'm leveling that, pouring that in there. And to this, I'm going to add a whole tablespoon of vanilla extract, not flavor, extract is stronger. With this, I'm going to stir it until everything gets dissolved, mixed well, and ready for the flour. This is how to make your shoe pastry. So while I'm stirring, I'm making sure that everything is well dissolved, especially the sugar. It's on low heat and it just has to be done with caution. No need to rush. Now, when everything has melted really nicely, the next thing you're going to do is to add your flour. I have put out two cups of flour. Now, the recipe originally calls for one and a half cup of flour, but our flour in this country is so sifted that it doesn't have the weight of the wheat. So that is why we always add a little bit of half. Sometimes when you're copying recipes online, you have to be careful with where it is coming from because of the metric um, conversion. So I added another half cup. So this is two cups of flour. And to these two cups of flour, I'm going to add in, it smells really good. Basically, you're making your own tool. <laughs> and I'm just going to stir it in. Now this shoe pastry, you won't regret doing it because it's easy to make. Now, there's a technique I'm going to teach you. This technique is pretty easy. All you have to do is to leave it at the bottom. When you leave it at the bottom, when it starts to catch, you pull it to the other side. That way you are sure that you are cooking your flour. Move. You need a little bit of elbow grease too. Wow, look at that. Immediately you start doing that, it starts expanding because that gluten in the flour expands. You see that? Looks good. I'm ready for my next step for my churros. I'm just gonna give it two more seconds. Literally one, two and it's off the heat. Now, the next step is to add my eggs. If you add your eggs immediately at this step, you're going to scramble your eggs because eggs don't like something that is hot. So you just keep stirring, right? You keep stirring your churro paste until it cools down completely. So now that it's a bit cooled, I'm going to add it to a bowl. Don't scrape out those dry bits at the end. They will just spoil your churros. You see those dry bits? Don't try to scrape them out. Leave them be. Now I'm going to add my eggs one at a time. It's very important that you break your eggs individually. You see that? so that you don't have any rotten eggs inside your churros or any shells. So I'm going to break two first, start whisking. You can actually use your hands, but no, use a, a whisk, it's better, it's easier. And the second egg. Now, after adding these two eggs, I'm going to take my whisk, they've already fixed. 
doesn't matter if you use a whisk attachment or a dual attachment same thing and just start blending that quite easily and simply on the lowest speed you want to bring it together so that everything can incorporate don't be panicked when you see it looking so funny you're on the right track to be not runny but plop what that means is you want the consistency you see it's still hot you want the consistency to have like a plop kind of effect and i'm going to put the last egg now so three eggs if your eggs are small you can put four eggs now the reason why i'm telling you this is because most of the time when you follow recipes exactly and then our produce are different um european recipes their their eggs are very for european recipes they will say three eggs these eggs are big eggs but some places you find that the eggs are small so just add one more egg so that you make it four instead of three okay i'm gonna add that in here Do it until everything comes together. It's looking good. Oh, it's looking very good. Good. Now I'm going to use a spatula to kind of scrape all of this because this is goodness too. And while I scrape that, I'm still going to stir it. If I still see that I need the consistency to change, I will still pop it, but it looks really good. So it's not really about time. It's about you looking at the texture and seeing that it is what you want. The quality is good. It's dry because it can. you see how it drops? That means it will drop very well when you're frying it. all right nice stir this is the consistency you're looking for because it can pipe easily we're going to use a piping bag for this so this is a piping bag and i'm going to use a star tip if you have one of these you can use them they help they help hold the star tip but i'm a bit old-fashioned so i like to just put my star tip inside and then cut where i feel necessary using the scissors i'm just going to cut this so now I've fixed my star tip and I'm going to add my oil to a pot. Now, the reason why I'm not using a frying pan is because Cheerios likes to be fried in deep oil, okay? So I'm using that heavy base bottom pot and all I'm doing here is I'm heating my pot first. Then I add my oil to it. This is about a liter of oil. I know. You're going to add all of the liter. If you're going to do this for a business, this is the only expensive thing that you're going to use, the oil. So make sure that you're going to use a brand that you can continue to afford. Now, I'm going to leave that to heat up while I stack this. I'm going to teach you a trick. All you need to do is to open up your hand and fold your piping bag so that it looks like a cup. You see that? <laughs> and then you're going to pipe some of that using that your hand to guide it and you're going to stuff it in. I know, a pretty neat trick. You can try it several times. A lot of people, they'll put it on a cup before they do it, they bring it out, it's all squishy. This is old school and it still works. So I'm not gonna overfill my piping bag I can do a second batch and all I'm going to do is to put a napkin over it so that it doesn't dry up. Okay? And then I'm going to squeeze everything down and you have to test it to see that it's working. So let's see. The moment of truth. We have chills. 
So if it comes out like that, it doesn't really matter how long or how short. You want your heat to be steady on medium heat, not too high because you don't want to fry it deep brown. You want it to be golden brown. So while we wait, the essence of the pot is so that the oil can remain hot when you even reduce the heat so that your churros don't brown. So I'm just going to put it about yay height. It's for business. You don't want it to be too long and you don't want it to be too short either. The long ones would have been really nice, but the packaging for it will be very difficult to get. So all I'm doing is just piping and cutting. It's very important to pipe and cut. Just plop your Cheerios in. And remember, this is just two cups. So at the end of the video, we're going to measure out everything that we did and how you can be able to sell this and make a profit. Now, if you have any questions, always feel free to email us. We will definitely get back to you. They look lovely. I don't want to overcrowd my pan, so I'm stopping right here. I'll refill my bag and then make sure that everything comes out looking really good. I'm just gradually turning them around because I don't want them to brown too much without the center being cooked. Now, as a food entrepreneur, it's very important for you to always taste your food so that you are sure that everything is just right. And remember, safety in the kitchen is key and cleanliness is even more important. You see this? That's already browned. But I'm going to, I know that the inside is not well done. So I'm just going to stir that. By me reducing the heat, because this is a cast iron pot, it will still make the oil hot. That's why it's important for you to use a pot than the frying pan. Look at that. What a thing of beauty. They are expanding, if you notice. We didn't use any baking powder in this recipe because the eggs make it expand. If you want them to be thicker or bigger, all you need to do is to get a bigger piping tip. This is the M1. You need to get a bigger one than this so that you can be able to pipe it longer and bigger. I'm almost done with this batch. Okay. When we pack this, we put the second helping and then I'll show you what we do next. While the second batch is still on fire, we have to quickly coat the first batch in cinnamon sugar. Now, I love this part because it is so nice. I'm using a half cup of sugar, a pinch of salt. I'm just using regular salt. You can use any salt you like. And some cinnamon. Now, it's all up to you on how intense you want the flavor to be. If you want it to be really intense, you can eyeball about two tablespoons. I'm putting two hip pinches on this and I'm swelling everything around. While our Cheerios is still warm, dump it inside the cinnamon sugar and roll it inside so that every crevice is filled. Now remember, most of us are you doing this class because we want to start a business, right? I have something for you. I have these amazing packs that come with a little 
milk for a dip so that we can add our chocolate dip. Cheerios are famous for chocolate dips. Now, if you don't want to make a chocolate dip from scratch, that's fine. You can buy a store-bought chocolate dip that you can squeeze in. Just measure out so that you know how much you're charging. And all you do is literally put it in there. And if you're doing this for home, you can just serve in a platter. I'm putting one eye on my second batch and one on my chills. I'm making sure that every crevice is filled with all that cinnamon sugar goodness. You see that? Looks really good. Now, um, with, with the churros, nothing is perfect. Some can be longer than others. That's fine. It comes with all its quirk. If you want to count it, you can. So this basically, one measure of this Cheerios recipe can give you two batches of this. And you can charge anything between 4,000 or 3,000 Naira. And you can be able to make a profit. This pack is less than 250. Some of them are up to 250. Some of the packs you find them up to 300 Naira. It's left for you to be able to calculate. If you follow us on our other classes, we're giving you a step-by-step -step on how you can make quotations. Make sure you buy that class too. Here we go. Everything is intact. Our chills looking so beautiful and yummy. Perfect size. My eye is still on this one. And then we have our chocolate syrup. You can decide to change it up if you like so that you can have caramel, but it's mostly eaten with chocolate. I'm just going to pour that in here. Look, wow. And there you have it, your churros ready to go.